Hello there, I'm Sanj Krishnan from Inclusive Magic. I'm going to talk about Star Wars today, specifically Episode 9, the final movie in Disney's sequel trilogy. That trilogy had mixed reactions. If The Force Awakens was crowd-pleasing but uninspired, and The Last Jedi was bold to some and heretical to others, The Rise of Skywalker is for pretty much everybody a disappointing end to the trilogy and the nine-film saga. I spent time thinking about why I found it so disappointing, and what came to mind was a video by Michael Arndt, the Oscar-winning writer of Little Miss Sunshine and Toy Story 3, and briefly also writer of The Force Awakens. Arndt's video, Endings, The Good, The Bad, and The Insanely Great, says the key to a really satisfying ending is what's called philosophical stakes. I've written about how the biggest problem with The Rise of Skywalker is its total lack of philosophical stakes. You can read about it on my blog, but here I'm going to sum it up in a nutshell. Okay, so on a basic level, what keeps us emotionally invested in a story is that something important is at stake for the protagonist. Michael Arndt talks about three kinds of stakes. Rump, sirloin, and... Wait, why, why, am I, why am I saying this? I'm a vegetarian. I guess I spend a lot of time around steak eaters. Anyway, three kinds of stakes. Number one, external. This is the conflict going on in the outside world. The example Michael Arndt uses is A New Hope. So there, the external stakes are, will the rebels destroy the Death Star and win a victory for freedom, or will the Empire use its weapon to instill more and more terror in the galaxy? Number two, the internal or personal stakes for our protagonist Luke are, does he have a bigger destiny as a Jedi, or should he just be like his uncle? And the philosophical stakes, a clash of competing values. Are we all connected, and should we choose to live with altruism and compassion, or are we all alone, and should we live with fear and just look out for ourselves like Han? What makes a really cathartic ending is that the protagonist seems to be losing on all three fronts, but they still act by their deeply held value out of faith and it turns their allies around and they win. So Vader is destroying all the X-Wing pilots, the Death Star is trained on Yavin 4, Luke is alone, but no he's not. He commits to believing in the Force, and at that moment Han comes back, helps him win. Of course, A New Hope wasn't the ending of Star Wars for much longer, it became a trilogy. Return of the Jedi is my favourite Star Wars movie. What? Well, I saw it as an 11 year old, so you know. Yes, it's clunky, but the ending is so satisfying, and that's partly because it fulfills this whole philosophical stakes thing. For Luke, the conflict is, does he give in to his anger and draw on the dark side, as the Emperor encourages him, as the only way to save his friends? Or does he stick to what he sees as the Jedi way, unconditional love, even if it's a recipe for martyrdom? Now Luke fights defensively until Vader finally pushes his buttons enough by threatening his sister, and then Luke unleashes his anger and beats his father down. But at that moment, he sees what he could become, and he pulls back from the dark side, throwing down his lightsaber and staking his position. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. And he gets blasted by lightning for it, but he still reaches out to his father and wins Vader over. It's so satisfying because Luke's unwavering conviction is borne out, and he wins through love, not violence. And then there were six. Revenge of the Sith is the ending to the prequels and a response to the original trilogy. It's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. The conflict for Anakin is, does he give in to his fear to save Padme, or does he adopt the more dispassionate attitude that the Jedi expect of him? Can he save the one he loves without turning to the dark side? Antagonists are meant to create impossible hurdles for the protagonist. What Darth Sidious does in Return of the Jedi and Revenge of the Sith is trap the Skywalkers. Only by turning to the dark side will they be powerful enough to save their loved ones from him, but in the process he wins because they become the Sith. If you look at the two trilogies, father and son are faced with the same conflict. Do they give in to fear of loss and turn to the dark side, or do they resist it, even if it means losing everyone? Yoda says do the latter. Death is natural, and if you honour what Han and Leia fight for, then yes, you would be willing to sacrifice them. Anakin falls. Luke comes close. This is what Star Wars is about at heart, as a myth. George explains, if you're set up for fear of loss, you will do anything to keep that loss from happening and you're going to end up on the dark side. That's the basic premise of Star Wars and the Jedi. Of course, once George's old Lucasfilm, Star Wars became the vision of people other than him. We got The Force Awakens in 2015, which had as its goals capturing the fun of A New Hope, soothing people who didn't like the prequels, and introducing a new generation of heroes. It did capture the spirit of A New Hope, and it introduced some promising new characters, but in my opinion, it also undid the original trilogy just to repeat it. In repeating the very same setup, Rebels vs. Empire tribute band, young Jedi student has turned and wiped out the other Jedi, his master's gone into exile. 
It undermined all the achievements of Luke, Leia and Han, because they seem to have made exactly the same mistakes that they spent the last three movies fixing. My question was, why? But the movie doesn't seem to think that's a question worth caring about. The Last Jedi does care about those questions. It doesn't care about the mystery box of Snoke or Rey's parentage, it cares about why the very same thing has happened all over again. That's why Luke is jaded. The film offers a reason for why this all happened. Luke created Kylo Ren. He briefly gave in to his fear of loss, like Anakin, Revenge of the Sith, and caused the thing he feared. It's controversial, yeah. It took me two viewings to get on board, but I think it's actually a really interesting choice. Luke has tried and failed to improve on the old ways, and he believes now that the Jedi do more harm than good. Of course he's wrong, because in the end he does a lot of good by embodying the Jedi principles in the most stunning way. But at the end of the movie you're left with Kylo, a guy who turned to darkness because he's felt weak, and now he's succeeded where even his granddad couldn't, and you have Rey, who holds the pieces of the past in her hands and has to build something new and enduring. I think that the stakes that film set up for Nine are, will the Resistance defeat the First Order and restore freedom to the galaxy? Now that Kylo has succeeded where Vader failed, what has Rey learned that proves darkness is not strength? And how do you reconcile being a Jedi with being human, or alien, and all the vulnerabilities that, that entails? Can you? If you've read the script for Colin Trevorrow and Derek Connolly's Duel of the Fates, you'll know that Episode Nine was at least briefly going to be about these things. But for whatever reason, that movie was replaced by The Rise of Skywalker, which is concerned with very different questions. The external conflict is, now that Palpatine has somehow returned, will the Resistance find him and stop him from blowing up a load of planets? And according to Chris Terrio, the film is driven by two questions. Who is Rey and how strong is the Force? Who is Rey? She's a Palpatine, but by her heart and deeds, she's a Skywalker. There's not a lot of tension in this question, since we never feel a plausible risk that she's going to be tempted to turn to the dark side. She has a brief bout of anger and lust for revenge, but then she goes into the final confrontation unwaveringly good. How strong is the Force? What does that even mean? The battle of light shows at the end seems to hinge on which is stronger, all the Sith or all the Jedi? The thing about the dark side is, anger is a very easy route to power. It is harder to win without drawing on the dark side. But here it turns out all you have to do is win by holding up two lightsabers and chanting for all the Jedi to be with you. Rather than the hero having to make a hard, character-defining moral choice like Luke did in Return of the Jedi, we get a deus ex machina. As Star Wars stalwart Sam Witwer, try saying that, of The Clone Wars and The Force Unleashed puts it, I think a Star Wars where the moral of the story is throw down your weapon, don't hurt your family, love or fear, that's superior than a Star Wars where you win by melting the bad guy's face off. If we look at the final battle between Rey and Kylo, she turns him by healing him. Her force heal is an act of selflessness, which she pays back. I don't like the force heal power, but if they made it a harder earned ability that crystallizes all of that cheat death stuff that Anakin dealt with, it could have been quite a payoff. It comes from Duel of the Fates. In that film, it's just the Resistance versus the First Order. Leia, Finn, and the heroes inspire a stormtrooper uprising and fight General Hux's armies to take Coruscant. Kylo Ren learns the power to drain life and goes to Mortis. Rey confronts him there, learns that he killed her parents, and she fights him in anger. He blinds her and then starts draining her life force. She reaches out to him and gets through, and Kylo feels the very thing that destroyed Anakin, but it doesn't make him feel weak. He gives her his life force and dies Ben Solo. Duel of the Fates is explicitly about balance of the force, that old chestnut from the prequels. Rey grapples with how to be a Jedi and also have personal attachments. Her solution ends up being to embrace the dark side and the light, to find balance within. It's a neat idea, but the way it's portrayed in the script, it's a little too easy. If you can dabble in the dark side without a risk of it corrupting you, that undercuts the challenges that Anakin and Luke faced. So what does balance actually mean? Here's what George Lucas said. I mean, you got the dark side, the light side. One is selfless, one is selfish. And you want to keep them in balance. What happens when you go to the dark side is it goes out of balance and then you get really selfish and you forget about everybody. And you... That doesn't mean you have to be a total pushover. In a deleted scene from The Last Jedi, Luke says, act only when you can maintain balance. He's saying that to criticize the old Jedi ways, but there's something to it. 
Maybe it's that your human impulses are valid and you should listen to them, but ultimately they should give way to the will of the Force. When you use the Force, you shouldn't be twisting it to your own whims. Whoever leaked Duel of the Fates gave us a real gift. They showed us a version of Episode 9 that did really try and synthesize the three trilogies and have some philosophical stakes. There's so much about Rey that lends itself to that. She has major abandonment issues. Her fear is that she will become nothing in the eyes of others, that she'll cease to exist. So what about an Episode 9 climax where she has to surmount that by literally becoming selfless? Light side strength isn't holding two lightsabers up and piggybacking off a bunch of dead Jedi. It's more like what Luke did on Crate, and it's compassion. The seeds of it are in Duel of the Fates, where Rey's dying act is to show compassion to her enemy, Kylo the beleaguered Skywalker, and she gets through to him. That's really powerful. We can only speculate about why Lucasfilm abandoned Duel of the Fates to take a totally different approach with the Rise of Skywalker. Carrie Fisher's tragic death obviously played a part, and the negative reaction in some quarters to The Last Jedi may have made Lucasfilm second-guess itself, which I think ultimately was short-sighted. It's very easy to criticise, of course, but what solutions do I have? Well, going forward, I think the solution is to make an episode 10. Not a trilogy, just a one-off capstone to the saga, kind of like Toy Story 4. More on this in my next episode. Until then, check out my article that this video is based on at the link below. Stay safe and keep sharing your magic.